But as far as tools, they're welcome to use anything. That's why we have the new stainless collection of tools. And it will okay. get discolored over use. So that is normal wear and tear. A good stainless steel cleaner will clean it up on the bottom. But same thing, they're saying that these are dishwasher safe. I don't know about that because it does leave them a little cloudy looking, a little kind of grayish looking. It's not going to affect the performance. So if the people that... People don't pay attention anyway. They're already throwing their stuff into the dishwasher. You can throw it out there, so it's not going to damage the performance, but it is going to alter the appearance of these of these pans. Exactly. Uh, this hole here is to divert the heat, like when it's sitting on the stove top, so it doesn't get as hot. But the handle will get hot. Am I right? It will not get as hot as normal stainless steel Because of that. Because of the diffuser. That's called the diffuser. So by having I just call it the hole in the pan. She okay. has the right proper I'm sorry. Term. <laughs> Write whatever she writes down at the proper time. The terms. hole okay. in the pan, I don't want a pan with a hole in it. That's not what it's called a sieve. But the, um, that is a diffuser. So by channeling it out, the heat is not going to concentrate. Okay. Um, but the, the handles are not going to stay cool to the, to the touch like other cookware we've gotten used to. So just be very careful with that. So you do want to make sure you promote the silicone oven that's with any piece of cookware that we're selling. And the, okay. edges, the edges are flared, so that way you won't get that drip that just drips all the way yeah, down the side. Yeah, that So feature, it yeah. did keep, just like the other pieces that we have, if you have some, like, junkier pieces, you might going to see streaks <coughs> when you're cooking because it just built on. That's the edge. That's what it's for. It's very, very intentional. What else? Okay. Um, all right. So um, we have two sizes. Okay. Ten. Oh, and just so you know, these are smaller than what we have. So you actually can sit this in the current 12 inch. So if people want to know what's the difference in size, it's shallower it's and it's a little bit shorter on each side. It's actually, honestly, if you do measure it, it's not even 12 inches. Yeah. You still gonna be able to throw a pound of pasta in here, but just be careful with your recipes. I would definitely test something at home before you bring it to a show and whatnot. Like if, like if you're used to one pot meals, you may have to bear, you know, modify it a little bit for this pan. Um, and believe it or not, the non-stick 12-inch is almost that much deeper than the stainless. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you may want to go with that one if you want to do the one pot meal. No, I don't. Okay. She doesn't have that one out. Okay. No, it's okay. Good. No, it's at my house, but I only earned one. Okay. Now, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they only gave me one. They didn't come in the kit. All right. Uh, okay. So that's the stainless collection, guys. What, what you're going to love about this and sharing it with your guests is, now we've made stainless completely fearless. Yeah. There's nothing to worry about. Here's the difference the stainless. between the sizes. So now, being that it's a hybrid, people are going to get the best of both worlds. So you want to gear them toward the stainless. Okay? There's not a huge, massive price difference between the non-stick and the stainless. So you're fine. You know. So don't be afraid of it. If you're going to buy only one, start with the 10-inch and do, you know, do a pull-apart bread or demo it with a monkey bread or something. Um, you know, and then they can use it, but it's great for, I did do omelets, they came out lovely in that, um, you know, and I love searing my scallops and shrimp in the 10 inch, loved it for that, um, you know, so it really, um, they do a nice job, they do a nice job, so now you're, you, can, you can offer either one with, you know, equal aquamidity, that's the word too. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to the non-sticks and yep. cookware. Okay, the whole big thing with this is the handle. So who has never touched this handle yet? You need to practice, okay? So that's why we have these pieces during the break later. Come in here, but it is a two-step process. You have to push, mm -hmm. squeeze, and lift, okay? So you can't just tug at it. And when you put it back in, it's the same thing. You Pretend push, you're working out. Push, you slide, and lift. <laughs> yeah, and it goes right back in. Now here's another thing. These handles are not oven safe. So be really careful for people that have Pamper Chef cookware. They're just so used to just throwing this puppy into the oven, finishing off whatever they're doing. You're going to have a ton of these melting and being destroyed. So just remember that this is not going to be oven safe. So they want you to, they, they did this for different reasons. Now with small spaces, you literally can stack. And they said that you could actually stack them into each other, but guys, cookware protectors automatically, an automatic sale, anybody that buys any of the cookware, because you could also use it for your platters. I mean, those are just for other uses besides just cookware. Mm -hmm. So definitely easy, easy add-on. Do not suggest them not to get that at all. They're going to show the pictures probably on the site where they're going to stack all the pieces into each other with nothing. I cringe at that. Am I right? I mean, catalog. I put dish towels. Yeah, it's in the catalog. It's in the catalog, is that. But for small space purposes, people are going to love that. Yeah. And um, it's also the fact that it's also now going to take up less space in the dishwasher. If people are so inclined to put them in there, I still would not uh, dishwash these, these guys at all. 
I wouldn't. I, I refuse to put, and I, I am an old, you know, I've been a chef for my entire adult life, and trust me, cookware should never go. I did put my stainless in, my, you know, the, the, the current line, and that was beautiful, but I still prefer to wash my, because I hang, all of my pots hang in my kitchen. I don't, I don't put them away. So I like them to look presentable. Uh, but the non-stick guys, it is gonna turn gray. And if you read the instructions or watch the videos, they specifically tell you that they will discolor in the dishwasher. But again, there's people who would put their children in there for a bath if they can get away with it. So they're not going to care. Quick rinse, you're out. Okay, yeah. All right. Another big thing is these handles. Are interchangeable. They're interchangeable, so you do not have to worry about remembering which went with what. They also recommend that you should just kind of just spot wash these. Like you don't necessarily have to like throw these in the dishwasher. If they do get clogged with water, make sure that they dry thoroughly on the inside so that you have no funkiness going on inside, okay? Make sure they are completely air dry. But seriously, I mean, I can't imagine that you would really need to submerge this unless you had like a wicked accident in your kitchen that everything just exploded all over. But hand wash these, spot clean them, dry them thoroughly. That's the number one tip with these, and they are interchangeable. So I love that. So you literally can just throw all your handles into there, and you're good to go. But just remember, in the oven, no handles. And they actually show, like in the video, that if you have, like, the hot grill pan in the oven, you literally, while it's in the oven, can remember, make sure that you press and pull down. And while it's in the oven, with one hand, it takes practice. Make sure you get a good, secure lift. Now, the handle has a little helper handle, okay, really small. Here's where you could use the microwave grip if you want, but make sure do not grab it because you're going to burn yourself, but make sure that you get good leverage and make sure that this is stuck on. I mean, seriously, you could tell if it's a little wobbly, it should be very, very secure because can you imagine people thinking that the handle is on? Everything just explodes all over. This is going to be crashing on oven doors, if anything. So. It needs practice, okay? It needs practice. So I want every single one of you to put your dirty fingernails and your fingerprints on these handles before you leave here, okay? Because I want you to practice, okay? I'm gonna get these all DNA tested. Yes, Kim Violet. So, um, cleaning those pans, not so much the handle, but the bottom of those pans, because it's that swirl on the bottom, I found that just even washing with hands soapy water still didn't clean up. I have a gas stove, but the magic eraser, Works beautifully on that. So you mean this ring all around? Yeah, silver ring. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. It almost looks like a, a CD. But it won't stay that way. <laughs> right? Even after the I, I use the eraser. I use the eraser. Yeah. So the magic eraser cleans it up beautifully. So if you're hanging your pots, so it's going to work. Now, this is still that titanium disc in here. Okay, so just remember that titanium disc. I haven't seen it in other cookware. Have you? No. Tell them about the titanium disc. You talk about it better than I do. <laughs> Please? I'll kiss you later. God, the promise that she makes that she never keeps. <laughs> what, what that does, the titanium disc guy, the reason that it was patented to our paper chap cookware is if you ever notice, did anybody ever do the, the trick that shows, it's not a trick, right? where you put an ice cube in the omelet yeah, pan, the saute yeah. pan, yeah. and like I say, I handed the pan to Brian, and then it comes down here and it goes to um, April over here. By the time it went that 12 feet, not only was the ice cube melted, but the pan was ice cold. So it's really temperature sensitive and conductive. So by having that, it radiates in, 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 you know, in a qualified temperature to stay at a current temperature all the way across your pan. That's what makes it really unique and better quality cookware. You need that heat induction, okay? So that's why that's there. So it centers and it radiates the, you know, the temperature, whether it's cold or hot, to the complete pan. Okay, and I know that sounds a lot of, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that at my shows, but if there's people investing money in good cookware, they wanna know the features as well as the benefits. It also okay? prevents hot spots and cold it, spots. That's what I mean. It radiates the temperature so it's even all the way across the pan. Okay, if you don't have like, you ever have pans at home where one spot is always hotter than the other, like the edges are colder than the center, and the center burns before, okay, that won't happen with our cookware. It's even generally across the board, okay? I describe it as growing up, my mother had a, a saute pan, a frying pan, and it never sat like this, it sat like this. So yeah. my whole life, we're doing musical chicken cutlets and musical meatballs, like moving everything around because the oil is pulling to one side, and then people, like, they get acknowledgement. You guys want to paint work pictures. Did you picture exactly what I was doing as a child, like moving yeah. the chicken cutlets with, with my mom? And so that's never going to happen when you have our cookware because it will it stay in the round, it will stay completely flat. The, the word you're looking for, it will, it, the, our cookware will never convex. Yeah. Convex means it's not going to warp up or warp in. So a lot of times you put a pan on the stove, it'll spin. 
I do love one customer where I said, anybody ever put the oil in the pan and goes to the corner? She goes, yeah, I just thought my house was crooked. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> like you're living the, what, the tilted house? No, seriously. Yeah. Uh, but they always have the same reaction. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so that's the great thing. None of our cookware will come back to war. And again, okay. this is not broiler safe as well. So we do not carry cookware that is broiler safe. No okay? longer. Yeah. What cookware do we have that is broiler safe? Right. 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 Okay, that's it. Okay. And the, the sheet pants, right? The exactly. sheet pants, that's yeah. it. But All right, so moving on. Okay, so I think we've got the cookware, um, you know, we got you a little comfortable for that. Let's see uh, the we tools. We'll be talking. The tools, we're going to go very quickly over them. We don't need to waste a lot of time. They're, they're you know, they're great tools. I do have to laugh about the, the home office saying, we're giving you these new tools because we felt the, the current ones we had, the beautiful gray ones, you know, with the silver that matched the executive cookware, were too long and too heavy, they fell out of pot. Well, these are longer and heavier. So the home office dropped the ball on that one. And they didn't okay. give us a small little one either. Yeah, and, we didn't, and none of us earned the little mini one, the one that cost four bucks. I hate to tell you. Yeah. Uh, Come and feel talk. later how thin the fish spatula is. It is really super, super thin, so you're going to be able to get right underneath those fish, the scallops, the shrimps, whatever, and do a nice flip and not have it completely rip. So, and remember, our cookware is all cleared for metal, okay? But it will scratch, but just come up here and see it if you don't already own I'm it. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I have been wanting a, one of the, the, the fish spatula forever with them, and then we were, when I was talking products with uh, Jackie and some of the home office people, that was the first thing I said, if you're changing our tool line, I need a fish spatula. But, I mean, seriously, not only for burgers and for your, you know, but I do a lot of scallops, I do a lot of shrimp, I love salmon, I love the delicate fish, and that thing is brilliant. That is, people are gonna, that is gonna be the first thing people are buying, I can't you know. So if you don't have that one, that would be the first tool I would recommend. Because everybody else has got serving pieces, they really truly do. They're really very nice, they're nicely weighted, they're long, you know, um, but they're, they're heavy, which you want that stability. Customers love the, the heft of something, don't they? Mm -hmm. That's heavy, yeah. you know, and I'm like, going, that's not a good thing for certain tools, but okay. Um, but they are really very, very pretty. So we'll move right on to the new tool turnabout. Yeah. No, let's do the teeth first. I know, but what I want to tell you is when you are loading it up, you want to balance it in here, okay? So you want you don't want to put all your level or your metals on one side. You want to balance it out because what they're actually calling this collection is they're calling it the mixed materials collection. If you didn't hear that line, that's what we're calling it, mixed materials. Collection. Why do we like using the word collections a lot at Pamper Jack? So you buy together. Right? You buy one, you want to collect more, you want to add to the line. It's a great way to call people. Do you want to add to your collection? Add to your collection. Because nobody wants a collection of one. That's like really lame. Okay? You want to collect <laughs> lame. It is. Really so lame. it's called a mixed material. So it's okay to mix and match, especially if you have those hosts that want everything matchy matchy in the kitchen. You know what? This is gonna stick out like a sore thumb, and it's okay. Now, do we want to talk about the tools or go right into the the spinning uh, I want to talk about the teeth for a minute spinning. because it's people like, you know, I know Yvonne right, loves her teeth, but then, she's, but then she's German, so let's just leave it at that. Um, no, but seriously, the thing about the, the, thing about the teeth, which is a beautiful uh, material to work with, I agree with you 100%, I think it's gorgeous, you have to read the instructions. These are not dishwasher safe. Okay. You must fully air dry them before you put them away. Like you can't just wash them and then put them in a drawer. You have to lay them out on a mat or lay them in the colander. Dry the, they have to air dry or else they're going to discolor and start to crack. So be, be, see guys, if you don't read the, the manufacturing or watch the videos, you're going in there winging it saying, oh, it's a spatula, it's all good. Nobody and if you've got, dishwasher, no. yeah, and if you've got a lot of formal guests at your shows, which you always will have, they're going to say, oh, it's like the bamboo, only, you know, thicker and bigger. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to go in, they're going to be very disappointed. So make sure you tell them they're beautiful to work with, love them for tossing a salad, great, they yeah. look beautiful on a table, you know, a, a serveware as well as in the kitchen, but you do want to make sure they know how to clean them. And a food safe okay. mineral oil will restore them back to their luster. So make sure that you tell people that you need to get that. We don't sell it, but you can find it's it in any store anywhere. anywhere. Uh, Cracker Barrel has it. Yeah. And if people say, do you, <laughs> do you have uh, well, Sal your Tom's favorite restaurant, Cracker Barrel? The spatula um, and the spoon do make fabulous uh, salad toms. Yeah, they sell so, it on Amazon. Yeah. You know, the um, TJ Maxx. Safe. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's got them. Crate and Barrel, Williams Sonoma. You'll find it anywhere, pretty much. Okay. And the quarter <laughs> spoon. I mean, try it. Line it up with our cookware. It literally feels like it just molds, like a perfect mold around the edge. So that is going to be the feature of that. It's the molded 
cornerstone of your collection. That's, that's designed to go into all of them. Okay, so we've got three pieces on the teak. And then we have the colorful pieces. The colorful pieces, what I love is that, number one, they're really, really affordable. So give them to anybody that's just starting out. Great gift for somebody going into their college, into a dorm, into their first apartment, a new house, a, a, a young couple. They pair beautifully, obviously, with our cutting mats and with our um, colored, colored knives. They've actually grouped them all as a collection now, okay? Again, that word collection. And we're not talking like that cheap. If you total it all up, what is the price on it? It's about $100, like $70, right? $70. What is it? I think it's seven. How much? 70? I think it's 130 Yeah, I think it's over 100 bucks for all those pieces. And so that's a great set to just give to someone as an engagement gift as a new apartment gift and things like that. Um, they're just self-explanatory. Guys, you, you guys realize that in the back of the index is where they put the products with the little red diamonds that really don't need that much explanation. You guys get that? Yeah. All right, you want to tell people to shop from the beginning part of the catalog. It's beautiful. It paints a picture. It tells a story. It naturally cross-sells what one thing goes with the other. But when it's time to shop, you want to direct them to the back Show them where to start shopping because that's where they're going to see, number one, the guarantee on the product. Learn to read the symbols in your catalog, guys. Your, your catalog is your silent partner, okay? It does the work for you. It saves your, it saves your back from schlepping in stuff, although Brielle and I bring way too much crap. We know that. But you don't have to. You totally can just direct people to that. That's where they're going to shop from with the little red diamonds, okay? That is what's not in the beginning part of the book. So it doesn't mean that we don't sell it. You're just going to look for it there. And so, um, what else do we want to say about the color pieces? Well, they, I mean, of course, they're made to go with our color coded knives. So, if you want to go for the I live in a circus theme, <laughs> there you go. It's um, the mixed materials collection. Yeah, well, you call it what you want. Okay, <laughs> now, uh, no, they're really, but she's absolutely right. I mean, I'm not going to send, uh, you know, my child off to his first apartment and give him, you know, a set of forged cutlery. Well, he tried to cut a bagel and ended up with 17 stitches last week. So <laughs> not too bright. I'm not gonna lie. All right. So, but they're great for a first, you know, first home, a first apartment. Um, you know, they're wonderful because they're very like the kids love them. Anything that colorful. I know Sue Isaac. You know, Diane just loves them more than anything else. Give me something in orange, and that girl's happy. So am I right or am I right? I'm right. Now, um, I do like them because. Like our other nylon material guys, they don't get gummy on the edges, like lesser quality tools. So they're always going to look that nice, unless yes. you put them onto a, a stove like I did with the other set at home. Yeah, they will melt, guys. I mean, be, be smart when you use our tools. They're not. None of our tools are meant to be left in the pot when you're cooking. No tool that should ever be okay? left in a pot when cooking Do because not. the chemicals oxidize with the tool. Okay, Do if you're, not. especially if you're making a tomato sauce, never leave any tool. <laughs> in your tomato sauce pots because the acidity from the tomato sauce will ruin the tool mm -hmm. and it will give your sauce an off flavor if you leave it in there all the time okay so get it out of there yep. i'm going to talk about the new tool turnabout um okay one thing starting off the most important this cannot be put anywhere near your stove that is oh, not really meant where it plastic. is to go it is not metal that is a plastic liner around it. Everybody thinks it's stainless steel, but the, the, but the, scent, the, the base and the rims are plastic, so they are going to melt. And so yes. this is why yeah. it was designed not only with the wonderful spoon rest to pull out, okay? So that's going to be a huge feature for people. They love it. You know, my kitchen is stainless, so I love having the stainless spoon rest, but the center, so the whole point is you put your tool turnabout where you want it to be, you put the tools in, and then you take that center and bring it to your work area, okay? So, like, if you have your, you just say, a knife in there, uh, you know, a teak spoon, uh, you know, one of our scraper collections, whatever, you bring that to where you're working, and you don't have to have your tool turn about right near that stove. And it's okay. not just for the kitchen, guys. You know, you could put your makeup brushes in there, your art supplies in there, your markers, your crayons. You could promote it to teachers. You could promote it to daycares. You could promote it to um, kids' rooms and activity rooms and family rooms. So it's not just for the kitchen. Okay, you guys get that? Mm -hmm. All right, another little tip here. If you if you need it separated, Lauren, hold up the, the base for me. Let them see the base. Now, they've 
decided to become, you know, a little prejudiced against signs <coughs> at Paper Chef with this new tool turnabout. So our little fat chubby tools have nowhere to go now. They're very sad and lonely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very so they're very upset about that. So if she you want to... She doesn't have hole where you can put the food chopper anymore. Yeah, they got a letter from me on that one. Ooh, okay, so now, but what you want to do though, those are, are designed to fit two separate, to work as two separate items. So like your garlic press, your can opener, all that stuff can stay right in the middle of your, you know, and then all of your spatula. So it is balanced, but all of those chubby tools will still have a place to go. So if you're bringing them to a show, you can put the longer tools in the center caddy and then put all of your smaller tools and balance it out. Kim, you were saying something, honey? Just when you're talking, talk into Oh, into the hello. You guys <laughs> yeah, I, I figured with my you don't even need the microphone. Okay, so just remember that though. That's if you leave them as two separate components, which I do like the look of it. So I have one on the end of one tape on the, my table, the other on the other end, and I have the height difference. Uh, so my, you know, my garlic press can go in there. You know, my, um, you know, there's so many tools that you know can't fit a can opener, but they look really cool in the center. And then you have the longer scraper collections and other things on the outside. It's going to really okay. appeal to a younger audience too. Somebody with a small apartment, it's affordable. I mean, you could. I, I, I think it's just you know really sleek looking. I think it's going to appeal to anyone that has any type of a stainless accent in their kitchen. Everybody's really into that whole look now, and so it really was time to design it. Josie, really can you bring up the multi pot to us too, please, for a minute? Thank and you. I also <coughs> want to tell you, we have not changed our cookware line since 2006. Yeah. I want to know who here still has their cell phone from 2006 or is driving their car from 2006. So it's my not that there's husband, anything wrong. Husband, I husband. still have my okay, phone. well, all right. So let's use the cell phone as the example. People say, well, what's wrong with the current cookware? Line. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the current cookware line. So rest assured for anyone that just bought a piece, just bought the all-purpose pot, just bought any of that, it's fine. It's just it was just time to upgrade and we want to keep on top of the trend. Is there another reason why we changed it? It's a matter of staying on, on the trend and people want the versatility. So the fact that now we are making stainless steel that is absolutely truly non-stick, that is the hottest trend coming out in all of the in, in the market today. I'm a huge follower because from having all my years of having my restaurant, I still get all the magazines, so I always know what's coming down the pike, and I knew we were going to be right behind it. We're about a year late, I'm not going to lie to you, but we're still on the forefront with this new material. Okay, I guarantee you, give it, give us like six months to a year, you're going to start seeing, you know, lesser quality, you know, fake ones similar to this because, you know, they love to copy what they see happening, but we are really top grade with this. And our cookware is now all open stock, too. How many times do you buy a box of cookware and you don't use one of those pieces mm. in there? Mm -hmm. And it just gets shoved in the back of your cabinet and you just put it aside, but you spent money on it. So now people can truly design their kitchen based around what they need. Every kitchen needs at least one piece of stainless and at least one or two pieces of the non-stick to make that perfect collection of everything that you need. Pair it up with a rock rock That's why and a sheet look, pan and right, a stoneware. Exactly. And then you're going to make an entire uh, cookware tools cook cooking collection in your kitchen. Unless you're a cowboy working a chuck wagon, you can't work with one pot only. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> um, now, use that line, it's brilliant. Okay. Um, Multi-pot. Here's what we're gonna go on to next here though, but I was gonna say something too. On the back of the catalog under the hostess half price combo, yeah. notice how they bundled both types. Yep. That is the best thing you are gonna offer. That is gonna be the booking for your hostesses. All right, that is gonna be the booking for your hostesses. It's gonna be that bundle of the combination of cookware. Okay? Right, that's it's gonna not be the set, it's, one the, it's tool. the open stock pieces that they bundle together okay. to create a set. But anybody could create their own set with these mixed pieces of cookware. All right, okay. we're gonna, um, we're gonna take, yeah, we're gonna take two minutes to talk about the multi pot and the new colander strainer, steamer, and no boil order. Do you love like this? I love this, okay. I love this. It's sold separately, guys, okay? $45 add-on. Everybody needs a good scola pasta, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a pasta strainer in Italian. Yeah. <laughs> the only one that got that was Claudia. <laughs> Oh, Gracie got it too, okay? Gracie got it. Gracie got it. Bill has got it. All right, so Long Island's in the house. Okay. So the, right. the multi-pot, um, 
multi -stri this uh, the colander does multiple things, okay? So obviously it is a colander. You actually can boil your macaroni in here. Just be careful when you fill the water level. People are saying that it's been bubbling over. It should only go about halfway. Did you, you heard that? It actually is going to just make a total mess in your kitchen if you go too high when you go to boil your water. So boil your water and then you literally can dump your macaroni on your pasta and it'll cook right here in there. And then all you need to do is lift this up to strain it and then you can put it into your dish because a lot of the recipes do call for cooking the macaroni, throwing it into your, into your saute pan and what. Not. But then it also becomes a trivet, so after you washed it and dried it, you could actually put it on your table and you could use it as a trivet to protect your tableware and whatnot, okay? But then it's a steamer. You could steam in two different directions. You could steam it when you open it all the way up. You could collapse it from the reverse. When you're doing that Caribbean chicken, it's really important. She's going to teach you how to make that cover recipe of the Season's Best Cookbook. Who's made that already? It's fabulous. You cannot double the recipe for a show, okay? So if you have a smaller show, and you know you're only having maybe up to 10 people, I would say, right? No more than that, Priya? Well, no? Three people, that's it. No. Okay. You each get 20 grains of rice. One, two, three, four. Hang on, Laura. What, Mary? Does that fit in any of our older pots? It fits in the all-purpose pot. It does. It fits beautifully. Julie? I know, that's what I heard so too. That's what I heard too. It does not go into any other pot. That's not true. <laughs> no, but I tried it in the all purpose pot and it, it, was, also it was a good. The, it also fits the old family skillet as a steamer if you collapse it all the way. Oh, okay. Okay. How is that possible? Because I tried them and I didn't get any luck with using them in anything else. I would never use it in the all purpose pot just because it doesn't get, it's too deep. You know, even at the first level, okay? Um, I, I love the fact that it would, you know, but I, I mean, that's great. So you, 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 if you have, if that's the case, I'm going to go home and try it again because I'm like going, that doesn't, it doesn't really fit anymore. Then, if, if it does it go to the bottom? No, then you, you, you can't have the steam directly under, you know, you got to have the little venting. Uh, but if, I'm going to go home and try it again because that would be a great add-on for people who already own our all-purpose pot or any of our formal 12-inch skillets. That would be great to know. But I got the same information you did, Jill, when I was talking to Jackie. I got, and I was talking to Sandy, and I got the same information. Oh, okay, I thought it fit so, nicely in the old yeah, pot. I, I mean, I'll have to measure the uh, the multi pump. I don't think it's 12 inches. What? Maybe it fits fine in our old cookware, but she was just saying if people buy it to just fit a pan at home. Oh no 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 no. no. Yeah, but try it in the all-purpose pot. See what you think. I mean, if you want to use it for the fact of boiling the macaroni in it, I think it would fit. Yeah, but actually, you know what though? That thing is going to be a big seller all on its own. That's going to be my go-to. <laughs> Um, you know, that's going to be my go-to thing, you know, yeah. uh, my big, you know, one of my big add-ons. So I love that, thing. that Caribbean chicken, it needs to look this way. So what you do is, like I said, you open it up all the way and you collapse it from the inside. And that way you have a larger cooking surface when you put it on there. But then you could also collapse it from the top and it's more of a basket. So, okay, so there's two ways to use the steamer, depending on what you want to do. So two ways. But Who did not know that? Leah, you didn't know that, hun? Yeah, no, but that's the whole point of doing this. You yeah. haven't played, and the video doesn't really show you when they did the new product launch. Yeah. But it's really important. Brielle's going to teach you how to make that dish properly because it's all about the placement of this in here. So go ahead. You want to? Okay, I'll let you do it here. Um, so what happened here, and we found this out when... Uh, the wrong way. If you try to put the, the steamer where the handles line up with the handles of the multi -pot, The wrong way. Okay, look at the gap you're getting. The, if the steam is coming out of your pan, you're not steaming your food. It's so your rice is basket. burning and your chicken is not cooking. So you have to, so the handle of the steamer basket has to be go, go opposite, so you have north, south, east, west, the correct way. Okay, and watch what happens when you put the lid on it now. You're going to hear it actually snap in. It actually clicks in and you have and no gap. And that's when you have a tight seal. Yeah. Okay. You see that? And everything is going to steam faster and more evenly. Especially if you're steaming chicken for the Caribbean bowl, guys, you can't be messing around making that not being steamed correctly. All right? And if you so. don't have this in here, if you put the, the handles lined up with that, you're going to always have that little spot. Like, you know when you guys are cooking and you're doing something, don't you usually leave your handle like this in the stove, right? You don't have then to. You don't have to because it's just enough space for the steam to escape. But if you need a perfect seal, you offset 
you off, make this off center and you put it down like that and now you have a perfect seal. An airtight. Airtight seal, seal like this. And okay. also, you can strain your macaroni just like that. You put your hands okay. on here, protect your fingers with the, uh, the oven mitts. Guys, everybody needs those oven mitts. Right. Everybody needs those oven mitts. Do not sell one, you sell two. You right. wash them on the out, with, outside with dishwashing liquid, but you can actually turn them inside out. I, put I throw them in the, in the bleach. In the, in the, I put them in the washing machine. Yeah. I throw I them right them in the washing, washing machine because you know when your fingers are a little sticky, you quickly stick your hands in a, in, a, in a glove. You know the inside is not that clean. I've had mine, I don't even know how many years we've been selling them, maybe 12 years, 14 years. I use the same exact ones mm -hmm. and I pass them around the room and people will buy them mm -hmm. as a set. That's an add-on $35. They have okay? to try them on to appreciate yes. how great they are. And let me tell you, okay. if you stick your hands like in a 500 degree oven and you then you, what you do, carefully take it out. You tell people, stick your hands into that glove. Don't make them touch the outside because they're going to burn their hands. They're going to see how hot it gets okay, and their um, finger is not I'm going to I'm cutting her off there. because she'll go on for about those minutes for like an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you could pour with that. All okay. right. Now, this pot, guys, somebody's going home with it. So you got to find Gwyneth. you got to find Josie. Yes. They're our raffle queen. Look at this. Good. All these people are going to pick All one right. winner. So keep buying them though. We're not raffling it off for a while, guys. You're gonna want this pot. Guys, that's a $300 pot. And it comes with the steamer, okay? okay. It comes with the steamer. Okay. It's a complete set. So we'll put that back on the table back there. Yes. Um, we'll all right, the we're, gonna, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up a little bit. We covered almost everything. The quipsicle, I mean, it, uh, what I like I like about, them. Can I talk about them? Well, make it fast because you're cutting into Julie's time. Oh, okay. So the quipsicle maker, make sure that you freeze it at least 24 hours. It's like a brick. So if you're already carrying things that are heavy, you know what? It's going to be up to you if you want to carry it. It is heavy, so come up here and do that. Well, it's going to give you directions as to make the quicksicles. You're going to be getting six sticks because you can make um, nine quicksicles in one round before you have to refreeze this guy. When you get yours, inspect yours. Right now they are on back order because there have been a lot that are becoming in damage. Mm -hmm. When you get it, there should be no ooze on it, no ooze no in the dry, box, no moisture. Stuff. Make sure that you don't see any white residue because that's the uh, freezing element inside. So make sure there have been a bunch of them that have been going back. Um, you can line. still sell them, and then they will get them to the customer or the house as soon as they're in stock. Yeah, I think okay. everybody that gets this should get the accessory kit because it comes with that measuring cup that makes the perfect quicksicle in different colors. So it's going to teach you how to make it in two stripes or in three stripes. It comes with a little tweezer that you can put in thin, thin pieces of like sliced fruits. But there's all different recipes now that are going around with the principal maker. The key is really important. You'll know when it's set. You turn the key in a clockwise um, direction, and then it's going to release, and you'll be able to lift it out. But then if you want to get the little cones, the cones are adorable. When you put this on there, you could twist it on there and lift it out. So once you know that it's loose, your quicksicle maker, and you know it comes out, put your cone in there. Because this is a cone that, number one, you could use it in different ways. I'm not going to break it open, but it comes with the three little happy spoons. It's the holder for the quicksicle maker. So that way all that drippiness goes it's into not running the cone. down. It's not running down your kid's hand. And okay? it actually has like holes where you can actually sip through to get all of that juice. But then you could actually use the cones by themselves without the cover and use them in place of like a wafer cone or a sugar cone to cut down the calories. Cross sell this with the ice cream maker. That's that's a no-brainer. Okay, always with the with the whether you whether they're getting the quicksicle maker or not, people can use these when they make the ice cream maker, okay, because they're fun. And that way you can just use them like that and eat. Yes? Um, by process of elimination, I found out that the actual base itself fits perfect in the make and take. Yes, it makes. And then all the pieces will fit in the make and take jar. So get yourself another make and take jar, and that way all those pieces stay together. Because when I get something from home office with a ton of pieces, I'm like, I'm sorry, what? What is that? The make and take black mason jar carrier. Okay. Yeah. It will fit the I, the quicksicle. So if you freeze it at home and bring it in that jar, it will still stay frozen enough for you to make the, the quicksicles at your shelf. Yeah. Okay? Never going to happen, but it's a good thought, isn't it? Okay. All right. I think we're done. The spurs yeah. maker and the, the fondue sticks, they're, they're self-explanatory. Telescoping lens, hand wash only on the rods. Guys, read the use and care. There's also worksheets when you go on Consultants Corner that gives you all the nitty-gritty and why we change the product and words to say and things to cross-sell with them. Educate yourself about And I products. really want you to take away from this whole thing, this is what the company is doing now, I want you to remember the word curated. C as in cat, U-R-A-T-E-D, curated. This is what Pamper Chef is shooting for now. With any new line of products we're bringing out, we want it to be a curated line. Our cookware now is considered a curated line, meaning it's very specific, it's very unique, 
It's got features that are not found in common cookware. Our last collection, we had the beautiful new cutlery coming out. So when we're coming out with these new items, you know, the Rock Rock collection is considered now a curated line. It's very specific for what it does. It's specific to Pamper Chef. And we're not going for quantity of products anymore. We're going for the quality and what's going to make it unique for Pamper Chef. Okay? So when you, somebody goes, like, well, why are you changing your cookware? Well, we're going in a new direction. We want every product line to be a curated line, meaning we want it to be very, you know, very top of the line, very specific, and, you know, branded to Pamper Chef. Okay? That's the, that's the goal we're going for. Sandy, Tim, and all that. That's the word they want you to use. Curated lines. Okay? It just gives it really the status that it deserves. Okay? All right. Thank you, Laura. Thank nice you, Brian. All right. Okay.